The government of Colombia and the National Liberation Army closed the fourth cycle of peace talks in Caracas, Venezuela. Russian President Vladimir Putin said his country is willing to return to the Black Sea Agreement in a meeting with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan in Russia's coastal city of Sochi. Africa's first climate summit opened in Nairobi, Kenya, with a plea for delegates to identify opportunities that may arise from solving environmental problems. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from Adresu Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. Guatemalans take to the streets again on Monday for the third consecutive day in rejection of what they have described as a coup d'etat. Thousands have marched and served it throughout the national territory against what they call the corrupt pact. This Monday, as and in previous days, they will also demand the resignation of the prosecutor Consuelo Porras and the special prosecutor Rafael Curruciche, who are accused of orchestrating a coup d'etat. On the demonstrations coincide with the beginning of the handing over process of President Alejandro Giamate that will be supervised by the Organization of American States and the Department of State. Also, several organizations called to mobilize in the name of democracy. To the people of Esquintrejo, to the people of the southern coast, we call on you not to be defenseless in the face of this grave crisis and to be attentive, to be united in the face of any call from the nation and as the people demand. Let's go to homeland. Let's walk. I am with you. Guatemala will flourish. Guatemala will flourish. The political and institutional crisis affecting Guatemala also reached the legislative branch. As a result, the Congressional Board will analyze the re-establishment of the Semilla Party. Previously, the Congress disowned the members of the Semilla Movement and declared them as an independent bench, limiting their functions. The Board's decision was based on a notification from the Attorney General's office. On Sunday, a few hours before President Alejandro Giamate begins the transition, process on the observation of the Organization of American States and the Department of State of the United States informed that they will proceed to make consultations on the suspension. Meanwhile, the advances of the parliamentary directive have been dismissed by the president-elect. And about the Congress, look, after the welcome that the people of Guatemala gave us, that they gave to themselves in the streets. The night of August 20th, they are 160 sessions. Can the board of directors keep their applause and their intentions? They are not relevant. In Honduras, a special commission will investigate former prosecutors of the public ministry, as ordered by Luis Redondo, president of the National Congress. The congressman informed on Sunday that the Special Commission will have the power to immediately investigate the former heads of the public ministry and their participation by action or omission in the structures of organized crime. Likewise, the Commission will also review possible links with acts of public or private corruption and the management of non-governmental organizations used by political parties to capture funds or launder assets from drug trafficking and terrorism. The Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grandin, Rafa Gonzalez, will participate in the summit of the Group of 77 and China to be held in Havana on September 15th to the 16th, the Cuban Foreign Ministry confirmed on Monday. The island's foreign ministry said in its account on X, formerly Twitter, that the event will be a broad and diverse space to agree on South-South cooperation strategies. Presidents of Brazil, Luis Ignacio da Silva, of Argentina, Alberto Fernandez, of Sri Lanka, René Wigger Ramesinge, of Mozambique, Felipe Jacinto Inusi, and the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, have also confirmed their attendance. With 134 member states, the G77 and China represent 80% of the world's population and more than two-thirds of the United Nations membership. The government of Colombia and the general staff of the FARC dissidents concluded on Sunday a preliminary meeting to reach a ceasefire agreement. The two delegations meeting for three days in the Department of Cauca agreed to set up a dialogue table. The date details will be confirmed next September 17th in a new meeting. 
Andrea Vendagno, political chief of the guerrilla group, confirmed through the Colombian media that they have invited Juvenal Ovidio Ricardo Palmera, better known as Simon Trinidad, to be part of the table. For his part, the government chief negotiator, Camilo Gonzalez, explained the tasks that were accomplished in the meeting. This task has been defined first as the elaboration of a ceasefire agreement with full guarantees for the civilian population and also the elaboration of an agreement that indicates the role for the talks. This will be carried out during all these days. In the nation's commissions, we are going to work intensively and next, September 17, there will be a meeting in which the progress will be made and the date of the meeting will be called in order to announce to the country the beginning of this ceasefire and of all the talks, good news for peace. On Monday, the government of Colombia and the National Liberation Army closed the fourth cycle of peace talks in Caracas, Venezuela, as they are seeking a negotiated solution to the internal conflict. This phase of the dialogue began on August 14th under the premise that civil society's participation in the process and in paramount transformation is key for peace and national agreement. Among the most important agreements of this process is the creation of the National Participation Committee installed on August 3rd and the six-month bilateral ceasefire in Colombia, which came into effect on the same day. As for the bilateral national and temporary ceasefire, it implies implementing the monitoring and verification mechanisms to prevent incidents, solve problems, reduce the intensity of the conflict, and improve humanitarian situation of the people. While the economic war against Venezuela harmed many households, this new scenario made retired chemistry teacher Rosa rethink her possibilities and talents. She took a chemistry knowledge and her crafting skills and turned her apartment into a laboratory factory and family enterprise venue at the same time. And today, her cleaning products compete in local markets. Let's know more about her story, thanks to the following material by our colleagues Adriana Sivori and Marcos da Silva. Enjoy. Through our social networks, we received a message from a retired teacher. I invite you to learn about our products, how we make them and how we produce them. Among so many buildings, Rosa guides us to her property. In a 72 square meters apartment, she installed a handicraft factory with all the corresponding permits. In 2016, with the economic war, there were so many queues to get flour, butter, milk, all those things. It was horrible, so I told my husband at that time, let's produce cleaning products because we are getting hit. They started with just personal hygiene products. In seven years, they established a whole workshop. Together with her niece, they prepared the orders. The accuracy in the combination of ingredients is the key to a perfect elaboration. The coconut oil for toilet soap. Angie already knew the business, but joined her aunt's enterprise. As the demand for the product increased, she needed more help, more hands on deck. So here I am to support her in packaging part and sold production. We share the tax, we collaborate well, and we are not fearful of the problems that may arise. We always look for a way to turn things around and keep on going. The pandemic opened a new world. They collaborated with the community, they taught, they sterilized environments. Chlorine and disinfectants were in those years, and still are, some of their star products. I am chemistry teacher, so this is easy for me to elaborate all these things. And knowledge is not for oneself. You have to share it with everyone you can. 
because knowledge has to be transmitted. We Venezuelans, in spite of our weaknesses and difficulties, we always grow. And Yulimar's trademark seems to keep on growing. The brand of the cleaning artisan can be found in every nearby store. Marcos da Silva y Adriana Sibori, Telesur, Caracas. You can find more episodes of our series Venezuela on the Move in YouTube and on other platforms. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates, and much more. All the stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back from the South. On Monday, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin met in Russia's coastal city of Sochi. Erdogan paid a one-day working visit to Sochi as confirmed by the Turkish office with the reactivation of the agreement on the Black Sea grain deal as the main topic of the meeting. Additionally, the Turkish and Russian head of state discussed other issues on the regional and global agenda, including bilateral trade, the conflict in Ukraine and the tensions of the African continent. During a joint press conference, Russian President Biden Putin said that Moscow is just weeks away from supplying free grain to six African countries after scrapping a deal allowing Ukrainian food exports through the Black Sea and insisted his nation is willing to restart the Black Sea grain if Moscow's demands were met, primarily the removal of sanctions. Russia withdrew from the deal on July 17th due to the non-compliance of the West. <laughs> Of course, we will not bypass the issues related to the Ukrainian crisis. I know you intend to raise questions about the Green Deal. We are open to negotiations on this issue. For his part, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan stressed the importance of the meeting for the resumption of the Black Sea Green Deal. Of course, the most important step. Today, everyone is looking at the green corridor issue in the Turkey-Prussia relations during this visit. They are waiting to see what will come out from there today regarding the green corridor. I believe that the message to be given to the world with the press conference after our meeting will be very important, especially a step towards the underdeveloped African countries. The President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, announced on Sunday the dismissal of his defense minister, Alexei Hrysnikov. The head of state has nominated Rustem Umerov, a current director of the State Property Fund, to replace him. The announcement made by the President, who claims to have consulted his international partners on the decision, comes amidst a series of statements inside and outside Ukraine about the failure of the counteroffensive, problems with recruitment, doubts about the continuity of support, and even suspicions of corruption and betrayal. However, the Ukrainian president assured that the causes of the decision have to do with the exhaustion caused by more than 500 days of conflict. Russian President Biden reported labels Ukraine's summer counteroffensive, which has been underway since June, a failure. The, he, the comments come despite Ukraine claiming to have made further gains on its southern front and near Bakhmut. This is not a mistake, it is a failure. At least today this is what it looks like. Let's see what happens next. I hope that it will continue to be so. In Indonesia, leaders of member countries of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations met, met to strengthen the cooperation mechanism at their 43rd summit. Malaysian Foreign Minister Sambri Abdkadir said that unity and harmony among members are crucial, especially as Asia establishes itself as the engine of a peaceful and stable region. The diplomat expressed concern about the state of emergency in Myanmar and about the deteriorating economic situation, continuing violence and limited humanitarian access in the country. The Prime Minister of Vietnam, Phan Minh Xin, assured that Asia is fully capable of asserting its position in a multipolar world as well as its central position in regional cooperation. We have a second short break coming up, but before we invite you to visit our YouTube channel at Telesur English, where you'll be able to rewatch our interviews, top stories, special broadcastings, and more. 
hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell to stay up to date on the world's most recent events. Fun short break, don't go away. Welcome back from the South. Africa's first climate summit opened on Monday in Nairobi, Kenya, with a plea for delegates to identify opportunities that may arise from solving environmental problems. The summit focuses on finding environmental relief strategies rather than focusing on grievances against industrialized nations that are responsible for the world's highest carbon emissions. The meeting brings together 24 heads of states and government from Africa and beyond to the Kenyatta International Convention Center in Nairobi. The summit aims to address the increasing exposure to climate change and its associated costs with a focus on Africa as it, represent, as it representatives of the youth and indigenous people groups will also present their declaration. At the summit, the gathering serves as a platform to inform, frame and influence commitments, pledges and outcomes ultimately leading to the development of the Nairobi Declaration. This is no ordinary summit. We are not here just to talk about Africa or climate change in the usual way, which often accentuates our divisions. You all remember the North versus South, developed versus developing, polluters versus victims, it is because we all have a shared stake in the Earth's ability to sustain life that we must envision together a future that embraces the values of equality, human security, and shared prosperity. Africa possesses all the necessary conditions to realize this future. In parallel to the gathering, hundreds of activists from across Africa held peaceful demonstrations against the inaugural Africa Climate Summit being held in Nairobi, waving placards with Let's Talk More action. The activists marched from Nyanjo Stadium to Green Park bus terminus, where they convened for the Africa People's Climate Assembly. As they say, the summit lacks legitimacy and shows no indication of addressing the real and worsening climate crisis. Africa People's Climate Assembly seeks to serve as an inclusive platform for civil society organizations, grassroots movements, indigenous communities, artists, youth activists, academics, think tanks, and other stakeholders to collaborate, share knowledge, and propose actionable transformation and solutions needed for climate compatible development in Africa. Niger's National Safeguard Council Board has deployed its troops around the French military base in the country's capital, Niamey. Since the overthrow of President Mohamed Bassoum, thousands of Nigerians have supported the junta's decision regarding the presence of French troops in the country. For three days, daily demonstrations have been taking place to demand that they leave the country. In Paris, French President Emmanuel Macron has made the final speeches about the permanence of the troops and their ambassador in the African nation. For her part, French Foreign Minister Catherine Colonia confirmed the military presence and added that French troops have not been able to complete their mission due to Niger's lack of cooperation. Iran has lowered its enrichment of uranium at 60% purity, according to a report by the International Atomic Energy Agency. The report by the agency said Iran has 121.6 kilograms of uranium in ratio up to 60% a far slower growth than in previous counts. Iran's 2015 nuclear deal, known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, limited Iran's uranium stockpile to 300 kilograms and enrichment to 3.67 percent. Iran and other parties to the nuclear deal were very close to concluding an agreement in September 22. However, as the Iranian foreign minister said on Sunday in an interview, the United States and the three European parties to the deal pulled back from the draft agreement. If recall, the U.S. unilaterally withdrew from the agreement in 2018 in a political and justified measure against the Persian nation. We have come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website, www.english.net. Also join us on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram and TikTok. For Tesla English, I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.